So with that also being said, who are you looking forward to seeing most wearing a Utah football jersey this fall, this fall, Cole? This fall, winter? <laughs> yeah. Um, Jake Bentley. And the reason for that, and, and I'll get into this a little bit later, but Bentley is here to lead the Utah offense. A lot of people will make you know, the argument for Cameron Rising, but Bentley had two great seasons at South Carolina. He now has an arsenal of receivers at, at his disposal at, you know, with, with Brant Keithy, Brayton Covey, Brian Thompson, and Nakua. And this guy, excuse me, these guys have, have all had prime experience and now can be used even more so with a solid passing quarterback. Yeah, I, I just, I can't, I can't see Whittingham bringing this guy in and not having him run, run the Utah offense. But that, that's why I'm the most excited is because, because I believe it's going to be Bentley. He put up great numbers at South Carolina, which, which I'll dive into a little bit later. And we're going to see, I think a different offense than, than we're accustomed to Sammy. You, you had mentioned earlier that you know Utah is is usually a pretty heavy heavy running offense, which I still expect there to be quite a few uh, runs on the offense. But I expect there to be more passes than usual. I think Bentley is a better passer than we've had in in recent years. Even though Tyler was was, was a above average passer, I think Bentley is is really really good, and I'm excited to see him and the and that Utah offense take the field. I'm going to go to the other side of the ball. Um, well, we've talked about it a lot, how Utah's replacing basically their entire defense. The only return starters you have are Mika Tafua and uh, Devin Lloyd. So I think it's going to be – I'm really excited to see Clark Phillips the third. He – he, Utah flipped his commitment from Ohio State like late in the game last year. He's a corner. I think – I honestly think he could be the next Jalen Johnson that Utah has. He has, I want to see if he can live up to this hype and this, how everyone's so high on Clark Phillips and how good he is and his coverage and how, just how much of a ball hawk he is. I want to see if he, if I can, if he can live up to those expectations that are placed on him being now the highest rated recruit that Utah has ever signed. And Utah's, I think Utah's one of the best schools at producing defensive backs. Like look at last year we had, two drafted and one picked up in free agency. That's pretty good. Or actually two picked up in free agency. That's pretty good with a secondary. So I'm excited to see Clark Phillips on the defense because I think he could be the next Jalen Johnson. So Clark Phillips, he's coming in as a freshman, correct? Yes. So some of his stats, um, he's out of Lakewood, California. This, this guy's 5'10", weighs about 190 pounds, uh, he he did some damage uh, while he was in California. Like you said, it looks like he's a four-star recruit by uh, 24-7 Sports, Rivals, and ESPN. Uh, he's rated the number four cornerback uh, in the country by 24-7 Sports. Yeah, that – how could you not, not, like, not be excited to see him play? Oh, I, I absolutely am excited to see this kid play. But he's I think so – I think I think the college game is a little bit different than than the high school game. Uh, I, I expect him to be fantastic, and I hope that we're able to keep this kid for a number of years. Um, and and he's probably I, I I'd say he's in my top five for guys that I'm excited to see play. I just think that he has the most opportunity to make in this situation, given the fact that Utah is replacing their entire secondary. He has some of the biggest not biggest shoes to fill, but he has basically a, like a straight path. He's going to be the day one starter. Like that's hands down. Like that's not even a question. Like come November 6th or 7th, Clark Phillips will be lined up on the defensive side of the ball for Utah. And it's not like it's, it's, I just, I just love Clark Phillips. I'm just excited to see him play. I think he's going to be great, but yeah, I'm excited for him. What I mean, Sammy, what what excites you most about this kid? What's what's his biggest strength? I mean, what what's he do that other guys aren't? What what got him to that four star level? I just think it's the pressure he can put on these wide receivers. Like like I've equated him to Jalen Johnson. Like you know how Jalen Johnson would stick on these receivers and made it hard for them to catch these balls. I think Clark is the same way. Clark is great. Clark is fast. 
I think he's going to be a perfect fit for this Utah secondary. And Sharif Shaw has done a fantastic job with all of our secondary or all of our corners in the past. And I don't see that stopping now. He put Jalen Johnson in the NFL and Jalen is playing really well for the Bears. And I think he's Jalen 2.0. He's, he's definitely come to the right place. I mean, you look at the amount of defensive players that Utah was able to send to the NFL just last year alone, and these guys are already making impacts on the squads that they're on. We've already seen a couple names come up um, in pretty big headlines, uh, and so it is exciting, especially to steal a player from Ohio State, the Ohio State, and, and to come to Utah. you you got to give it up for, for – coaching staff i mean to, to take somebody a four-star recruit like that out of california who's already committed to a, a school that that definitely is always right there in the playoff conversation and, and looking to win a national championship that's it's impressive and he definitely sammy he definitely is somebody i'm i cannot wait to see rocking that drum and feather um on the side of his helmet it's going to be fantastic Yeah, I'm also, I'm excited to see whoever's under center for Utah. If it's Bentley, if it's Rising, whoever it is, I think it's going to be a good year. Like you've already mentioned, they have an arsenal of weapons. You have Covey, you have Thompson, you have Nakua. Um, People are sleeping on Solomon Enos. We have him. You have Jalen Dixon. You have Cole Fotheringham. You have all of these weapons that are going to be able to make these big catches in big time moments. So I, I've always been more of a defensive kind of person, like watching football, but the last couple of years watching Utah and watching Utah build these, this offense with these star wide receivers and these great running backs and these good quarterbacks and these stout offensive lines, I, I'm i starting to mold more towards being an offensive fan. I still love defense. I love a good big hit and like the next person. But I think this year's offense is just a little bit under where I like last year's offense, I was like, Oh, like this is going to be the best offense Utah's had. Mm -hmm. And I think that this year's offense doesn't get to the level of last year's offense, but it gets pretty close. Like I'm excited for Bentley, excited for rising. Whoever's going to be under center for the U I think is going to kill it because you have such a strong arsenal of weapons. There's no, there's no way you can't be successful. Yeah, it's it's interesting to look at the differences in this year's roster opposed to last year. Um, you look, I mean, the, to me, they were almost equal. You know, whether the offense was on the field, the defense was on the field. You expected big things to happen. You know, with with Tyler Huntley under center, Zach Moss in the backfield. You know, all those receivers out there. You expected touchdowns to come uh, on almost every drive, and then on the on the defensive side of the ball. You weren't worried because of Julian Blackman, Jalen Johnson. You know, you had Bradley and I taking down those quarterbacks, stopping those plays. But this year, I think, depending on the quarterback, I think the offense might be the the greater strength for Utah. You know, I think the defense is going to be the side that you're holding your breath a little bit, just worried about how many points they're going to give up. Not, not getting blown out by any means, but I think we're, we're going to have more confidence in our offense and expect them to lead the team as opposed to last year. I think it was 50, 50, maybe a little bit more in the defense because the defense came up with big stops and, and, and created turnovers and got the offense, the ball back and they did their thing. But this year I, I would say I'm a little bit more trusting of the offense, I, even though there's so many, different things. I mean, we've got, we don't know who the quarterback is yet. We're probably going to be running two running backs. It's, it's a little crazy, but that arsenal of wide receivers and the tight end is where my confidence uh, is. I totally understand that. Like the defense is, I, the defense is a, is not a huge question mark for me. The secondary more specifically is a question mark for me. We've talked about it on episodes past, Mm -hmm. but one thing is for sure, like Kyle Whittingham and his like defensive staff know how to reload talent and they know how to get out on that def- on the field and make sure that they come off it on third down. Like that's one thing for sure. Like I have more faith in the world, more like I've no I have all the faith in the world in Kyle Whittingham and Morgan Scally and the defensive staff at Utah because Utah has proven themselves to be a defensive powerhouse. Hmm. So I'm not I'm not as worried about the defense as some people might be, but 
again, yeah, I'm a little bit more excited to see what the offense can do, but I want to see who on the defense is going to step up and make those big time plays that we're used to seeing. Yeah. Both, both sides will be very telling of how good the coaching staff is uh, right. this year because huge turnover on both sides. I mean, you'd almost, you'd almost classify it as like a rebuilding year, right? Like almost, almost. On the defensive side. Yeah, it is. You could call, call it a rebuilding year on the defense, but on the offense, not really. You lose yeah. your quarterback, you lose a running back, you lose one right receiver and you lose like, one to two offensive linemen 